Good evening. So, um, a couple months ago, Creative Art Box contacted me to see if I'd be interested in reviewing um, their subscription box service, and I said, sure, why not? So, um, I finally got my first one in, and it's, uh, I guess, uh, April 7th, so still early in April. Um, and uh, it feels fairly substantial for a smaller box. Creative Art Box is a new subscription art supply service. Um, it is intended to give you pretty much everything you need to get started on a project. And um, although they in, they encourage you to use your own inspiration, if you can't find, um, if you're stumped, they've got a blog where they share ideas on how to use the products that are inside, which I think is really exciting. I think it's something that Art Supply Boxes should look into in general. Um, it, per, it helps out the community, it employs artists, um, and it shows people who are hobbyists or students um, a new way to utilize the product. So I haven't opened my creative art box yet. I wanted to share it with you guys. Um, I did, of course, black out my mailing information and I slit the tabs. So let's get started. And um, I should say that this box was sent care of for the purposes of review. So um, I did not pay for this box. So this month, we get a little wrap package here. We get some Sakura of America cray paw, and these are oil pastels. We get, it looks like an ATC size card of canvas paper. And we get, it feels like watercolor paper, and it is, it's Cotman watercolor paper. It's a postcard, and let's see. Oh, there's a little sticker in there. And we get a card explaining the materials inside. All right, so Creative Box April. Oil pastels are formulated with extra fine quality pigments, waxes, and oils. They are perfect for very smooth drawing and a wide range of effects, from bold, intense strokes to subtle shading. They are suitable for many surfaces, including paper, board, canvas, and wood. They get dirty fast, so you'll want to keep a cloth Want a, oh, so you will want a cloth to keep them clean, and gloves or a cloth for your hands too. Your colorless oil pastel aids in. Okay, so there's like a colorless blender in here. Oh, oh, I bet there's a colorless blender in this. Let's open this. I like totally missed out that I didn't open one of the goodies. Yup. Looks like the colorless blender, that's cool. It's an extender. So what this is, is this is the binder that's used in the oil pastels without the pigment. And that's useful for blending. So I'll put that aside. Um, since oil pastel, pastels can leak through paper, you'll find an artist postcard, that's this, at 140 pound paper, and an artist trading card at 200 pound paper for you to practice on, included in your box. The premium box includes a set of 12 oil pastels in vibrant colors. And they encourage, they say, don't forget to follow us on social media and tag your box to, uh, tag your box, reveal, oh, your tag your box reveal so you're unboxing or artwork to win extra surprises in your next box so um that's cool so they reward you as an artist and a subscriber for sharing this your box and your goodies and what you make on social media so instagram is instagram.com cre slash creative art box their pinterest is pinterest.com slash creative art box twitter is twitter.com slash creative underscore our box and Facebook is facebook.com slash creative art box and I have an exclusive interview with the creator of creative art box that I'm going to be sharing on the blog soon so if you guys are interested in what you see here a single month of creative art box is $29 Three months is $78, six months is $138, and 12 months is $240. The plans, unlike some subscription box services, um, like Loot Crate, for example, uh, <laughs> I found out when I bought a subscription as a gift for my younger brother that it automatically renews. That was an expensive mistake to make. Um, this does not automatically renew. So you're not going to be surprise charged for boxes you didn't think, you didn't realize you were getting. Um, and the price includes shipping. The site says free shipping in the US. So I am getting my cray paws open. And 
and it's a set of 12 and it looks like it might have yeah a multicultural all right somebody knows i like doing people like rendering people so there is what looks like a portrait set of the oil pastels and here is the blender and I'm going to set aside what they said. Actually, I could use the, um, I'm pretty sure I have canvas paper and I know I have watercolor paper. So I'm gonna grab some from my hoard since I have plenty of that so I can demonstrate these for you. All right, so I went fishing and I found a few other things that I can use my crayon on. So I have additional watercolor paper I also found a mini canvas. Basically anything with a good tooth has the ability to take your uh, oil pastel. And when it's finished, you're probably gonna wanna spray it down with something like matte finish. Um, that way it won't continue to smear. So I'm gonna put that aside and we're gonna go ahead and swatch these color pastels and I need to grab a paper towel because they did warn my hands are gonna get gross so um since we have a white what I'm gonna go ahead and do is take a sharpie since we're just doing swatches and that'll give us a baseline for opacity And when I was a girl, I guess about 12, that was when I first started requesting art supplies from family members as Christmas and birthday presents. And I remember my grandparents gave me a set. Oh, they still smell the same. My grandparents gave me a set of um, Craypot oil pastels. Ooh, nice, creamy, moderately opaque. Um, and I, I love them, I use them to nubbins. I really like doing flower illustrations but I also like drawing my cat Midnight, so that was what I spent a lot of time doing. And sort of kicked off this, uh, I don't know, almost 20 year obsession with art supplies. And these multicultural colors are really nice so far. They're very creamy. Uh, they seem fairly pigmented. Oh, and they smell great. But I mean, maybe that's just, maybe that's just me who thinks they smell great. But really, I do love the smell of these sort of pastels. And I prefer, I don't, I don't, as an adult, care for uh, mediums that are going to get all over my hands because they tend to get all over everything I own. Um, I, I have a heck of a time keeping my brush o in check. Um, but I really loved playing with these when I was younger and I didn't even have access to good paper it w I used them on like construction paper and poster board and now I have access to so many better materials That said, I will I will admit that um, I am not an expert in oil pastels. Uh, my media of choice, my media of expertise, is um, watercolors and markers. Although I am starting to pick up color pencils, we're gonna do a blending test now. Um, so uh, I may not be able to give you the sort of advice and input that you need. Um, and I highly recommend checking out other artists on YouTube and Googling around. If there is a question that I failed to answer or something that I answered incorrectly, I'm sure, since these are oil-based, I'm sure there's a solvent, quite possibly linseed oil. I'm sure there's a, so a solvent, though, that can that will really allow you to paint with these in addition to using them as in their stick form. And 
In the upcoming blog post, ideally I'll be able to tell you what these are made out of. They seem to blend fairly well though, although I haven't pulled out that um, color, the colorless blender. That's a fairly new addition, I think. It definitely wasn't available when I was a kiddo. All right, so I'm gonna show you something right now and I'll hate it because I hate having dirty hands, but you can use your finger gently to sort of buff out areas of course, if there's anything, any schmutz on the paper or other like specks of the other color, it can get in and make it muddy. So if that's something that bothers you, um, just be aware of that. Some of the black schmutz got into the other colors. All right, where is that? There it is. See how well this colorless blender works. Ooh, okay. Another nice thing with oil pastels is um, you can also sort of build up layers in a way you might not be able to with color pencils because they're softer than um, color pencils are. So when you're done, if you have matte fixative, this is going to put a tooth on your paper as well as seal these in, so you can even work in layers. But let's do a test to make sure they don't melt them. Okay, so I just went and sprayed my matte fixative, and um, I highly recommend you do it outside if you can, or in a well-ventilated area if you can't go outside. Um, and I am going to try to smear it. There's still a little smearing where there was smuts on top of the paper, but not nearly as much smearing um, as when I, before I spray this fixative. And now let's try using the extender. Ah, uh, see? doesn't affect it hardly at all. So if you want to seal your oil pastels, um, a archival max matte fixative is a good way to go. And if you need to get rid of the schmutz, you can brush it off very gently with a drafting brush. And make sure you clean that out because you don't want you don't want oil pastels getting on your other things when you're working on them. So something else I pulled out was a little piece of canvas board. I'll show you it in a minute. Um, I wanna say these were made by Art Alternatives, but I might be wrong about that. Alvin also makes some of these, and they're pretty inexpensive. If you're looking to practice techniques, you don't need something that's gonna last forever. Oh. You don't need something that's going to last forever. These are just fine. I like using Posca markers on them, but oil pastels will work on them as well. And the thing about using oil pastels on something like this, let me zoom in. This has a fair amount of tooth to it. So you can do a lot of layers of oil pastel. You can also apply it kind of lightly. So this is a fairly light first layer and I'm going to blend it out using my blender a bit and then I can go over it and add another layer and fill it in a little bit better and even with that you can still see the texture of the paper and if you have a palette knife and I don't think I have one handy um, you can even scrape away, just use this, the blunt part of some scissors, you can scrape away some of your layers too. This is particularly useful if you want to add a highlight on something that you've, um, let's, let's go over here to the darker skin tones. So, we've got layer one. 
And then we've got layer two. And then we've got layer three. All right, so let's say we want to pull white highlight on that. You can use your palette knife, or I guess you could even use like a, maybe not a dime, but maybe like a penny, something that has um, a flat edge that would be good for scraping, but isn't gonna cut you, because that's not, you're not looking for real, a knife knife, you're just looking for a scraping tool. Um, and we're gonna scrape some white lines. And that could be a useful technique for adding highlights to hair, or if you have the premium box and you have the 12 piece set, this can be a useful way to add um, like strokes of grass and then you could even go back in with yellow. So to sort of push that point, I'm gonna go in with this, let's see, this is raw sienna and I'm gonna carefully go over where I scraped away and add some highlights in. And when you're finished and you want to preserve it, remember you can spray this with spray fixative, um, spray mat. I have used Krylon spray mat for years. I really like it. Um, you can spray it and it's not going to go anywhere. All right, so the internet, uh, thanks to Juliana Kunstler, Kunstler, uh, K-U-N-S-T-L-E-R, julianakunstler.com slash art. Her site recommends you use a solvent that is 50% turpentine and 50% linseed oil with oil pastels, and you can um, paint with it sort of like you would with oil paints, and that sounds really cool. Um, unfortunately, I don't have any of either of those in my studio, but if you do and you have some oil pastels handy, I'd love to, to hear about um, how that works for you. And if you have the the Sakura cray pa, cray paws, uh, crayon pastels handy, I would love to hear how well that works with these. Oh, this is that was, not even thinking this is the the back of the box I had taken the tray out to make removing these a little easier in fact if you don't need the tray anymore you can fit the blender in here as well so we were also given a Cotman watercolor paper postcard and a canvas paper ATC. And I think what I wanna do is I think I wanna do a mixed media piece to sh show you how um, a a, even a small introductory set like this can be used in your studio with other material materials you have. So I will get working on that and I'll check back in with you guys.